Good morning, class, and welcome to Ballistics University. There's been a lot of controversy lately about AR-15 style rifles. This is a Rock River Arms National Match A4. It's been shown in a few videos. 20 inch stainless steel barrel. It is an extremely accurate target rifle. Today, we're going to discuss how to clean it and how it operates. The first thing you do, class, when cleaning any type of firearm is make absolutely certain that it is empty. As you can see here, the bolt is back in a locked position and you can see into the chamber, see that it is indeed empty. Next thing you do is remove the bolt carrier group. Retract the charging handle so the bolt will slide forward. Don't let it slam because it's not good for the parts. Let it slide forward. Push in a little takedown pin over here. And the whole unit comes up and open. Remove your charging handle again. Your bolt carrier group comes out. Set it aside. Take the heart charging handle out. And now you can separate the upper and lower receivers. This is the lower receiver, which controls all the firing mechanisms. Your trigger, this is your hammer. Put it in the fire position and gently squeeze the trigger and you'll see the hammer will come up. Don't let it slam against this little piece here because that's not good for the equipment. That's the hammer. That's the part that hits the firing pin. And it is all located in the lower receiver along with the safety. The upper receiver is the upper part of the rifle. This is a gas operated direct impingement 223 rifle. What that means is that as the rapidly expanding gases are pushing the projectile down through the barrel and it gets to this point, some of those gases are channeled backwards through this aluminum tube back into the chamber. And you can see that tube comes in right here. That tube fits into the upper receiver or the bolt carrier group and fits right in this little key. Right here. Fits in here. The exhaust gases are blown back and directly impinge upon this unit pushing the bolt carrier group backwards to eject the shell into chamber a new round. We will have to disassemble this to clean it. Don't be lazy, take it apart and clean it. Now, any bolt has to have a locking mechanism in it to keep it from blowing back into your face as it's being fired. This is the bolt locking mechanism. As the bolt carrier group slides into the chamber, as you can see, it pushes this little piece back and forth. When it's in fully to the battery position, this little piece locks back. That's what keeps the bolt from flying backward because this little piece here fits in a little channel up inside there. It won't move until the gases push against this piece, make the whole unit slide backward, unlocks that cam, and then the whole bolt carrier group will come apart. So you have hot exact, uh, exhaust gases going into here and coming inside this whole mechanism. So let's take it apart and clean it. First thing you do is take out the firing pin retainer, which is this little piece here, and then the firing pin comes out. This is the firing pin. This is the part that actually hits the primer and causes the firearm to fire. You can then pull this back to its uh, retracted position, turn it 90 degrees, slide it out, and then this whole bolt will come forward. This is the bolt. This is the area that holds the case head. This is the extractor. And this is the ejector. The extractor grabs the case around the rim. As the bolt carrier group retracts, it pulls it out of the chamber. When the empty cartridge gets far back, it hits this piece and pops out. Now, as these rifles are fired, there's going to be a lot of carbon buildup and products of incomplete combustion. Gunpowder doesn't burn 100% complete. There'll be some products left over. You need a solvent to clean that. The solvent will get all the areas of byproducts 
cleaned off the bolt carrier group, the trigger, the, the bolt, the inside of the rifling, and everything like that. After it is cleaned with a solvent, then the pieces need to be lubricated with a lubricant so that they slide back and forth together inside here. When these guns were first designed, they were designed with a different powder. When they were put into service in the military, they changed the powder because they had so much of it left over, they wanted to use it. The powder didn't burn very completely, got the whole inside of the upper receiver all gummed up. The bolt carrier group got caught in there and wouldn't slide, wouldn't go into battery, and the gun was useless. That was the biggest problem they had with the AR-15 in Vietnam. They had poor powder, which it was originally not designed for, gummed up the works, and it wouldn't work. You need to keep these guns well lubricated and well cleaned, and they'll work forever. The first thing we're going to do is clean the inside of the barrel. There'll be parts of unburned powder. There'll be parts of uh, copper. There'll be different pieces inside here that need to be cleaned to make the lands and grooves nice and clean so they can grab the bullet. But you don't want to do any damage to it. If you just take the cleaning rod and kind of shove it in there, there's always a possibility that you could damage the very, very beginning part of the rifling. It's called the lead. That's where the bullet makes a jump from the cartridge case into the rifling. If that is damaged, the bullet starts off poorly. So you want to make sure you don't damage that. Best way to do that is to put in a guide. This guide slips, slips right in here where the bolt carrier group went and slides in place. And as you can see, there's a little tip in here so that the guide rod, your cleaning rod, will go exactly where it needs to be and it won't hit areas it doesn't need to be. Take a patch, get it soaking wet with solvent, and then run it in through the guide. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of green. Green is from the copper that's inside from the uh, previous bolts that went through it. And a lot of times you'll see dark black powder. That's the powder residue. Use a good brush. Brushes are made of either bronze or nylon. You don't need to run a steel brush through there. You don't put anything in the barrel that is harder than the steel of the barrel. Old military rifles always have a cleaning rod with them. They're made of steel. Please don't use them because you always have a chance of nicking up the barrel. Use fiberglass or some other type of aluminum or something that is softer than the barrel. Otherwise, you always have the possibility of doing damage to the barrel itself. So that solvent has had a chance to soak into the barrel a little bit. So now we'll put a brush in. Again, this is brass, or not brass, bronze. The barrel is already wet from the solvent, so we'll just run it in and out a couple times. notice you're cleaning this rifle from the breech not from the muzzle the muzzle is very is up over here at the very end the last part of the barrel that the bullet sees when it leaves is that very last little millimeter of rifling at the very end if you nick that and wreck it you're going to have an inaccurate barrel and you're not going to have a gun that shoots well no matter what you do to it oh and one more safety tip this is a solvent. It will also take the finish off dining room tables. Your wife will be extremely upset with you if you take the finish off her table. So get a pad like this that has a coating on the bottom. So even if you spill some solvent, it won't go onto your wife's dining room table. Keep you out of big trouble. So we ran the brush through there. Let's see if we loosened up anything. Run another patch through it. And as you can see, it loosened up some fouling. Keep doing this. Do it a couple times. Do it until the patch comes out clean. When your patch comes out clean, your barrel is going to get as clean as it can be. Okay? Now we need to clean these other parts. All right, now that we've got the barrel clean, let's move on to the bolt carrier group. 
as you can see these are all the different components of it take each component and wipe it down with a solvent soaked rag don't be afraid to get your fingers dirty get up inside there and wipe it all down because all the incomplete products of combustion have been blowing right in through here get up inside this piece too you can see that's where the bolt itself comes in so you can even take the, the uh, rag that you cleaned it and get inside there same thing over here this is the back part of your bolt carrier group get up inside there and clean it up inside there don't be afraid to get your fingers dirty the bolt itself needs to be cleaned right up around in here and in here because the exhaust gases will blow right in through here and go down onto this part so wipe it off real good as you can see this part here has got some fouling on it if it's hard to come off you can get a little scouring pad like this and put some elbow grease in it that's been there for a while and it probably won't come off this rifle's been shot a lot but make sure you get all the big pieces off of that and then run solvent through it again you can take the extractor off if you want to this little pin comes out and you can actually use the firing pin to push that little pin out if you do be careful there's a tiny little spring in there if you lose that spring there won't be the right amount of tension on your extractor and then the gun won't work right so if you're standing out here in the woods you probably really don't need to take it apart but at home on your dining room table it wouldn't be a bad idea after you've got this all cleaned and everything inside is cleaned and all your bearing surfaces are clean then we can assemble it that's when the lubricant comes in all right now let's assemble the bolt carrier group this is the pin that fits in here to keep keeps it in place it only goes in one way it goes in like this it will not go in this way as you can tell there's tiny little stakes there to prevent it from going in backwards so it only goes in one way put some lubricant on the parts that slide and up inside there and you can see it slides in until that part lines up right there and then this piece goes in the little cam then rotates 90 degrees so the firing pin will go in firing pin goes in from behind make sure it's pushed in all the way then your firing pin retainer wrong way there now make sure this is lubricated here put another little drop in here because this is an important part it slides back and forth as your bolt goes in and out of battery so it needs to make sure that that's lubricated now you wanted to make sure the whole inside of the upper receiver is clean too you can take your your solvent soaked rag and get up inside there clean it up real good make sure you get all those surfaces clean because that's where this part is going to ride on so make sure it gets all nice and clean get all the junk out of it and you can even get inside there and clean the chamber this is a special chamber brush goes on a rod goes inside there and cleans the chamber push it in and twist it because all these little locking lugs on this piece are going to match with locking lugs on the inside there so make sure you get them all clean get all the following out make sure your chamber is clean to accept the cartridge and then wipe it down make sure you get all the junk out of it 
Now, let's lubricate it and put it back together. Now your charging handle goes in first. It fits in the upper receiver. You can tell there's two little wings here. Those little wings go right in there. So I put it in first, let it slide in its little spot, and then move it forward just a little bit. Next goes into bolt carrier group and get it get it lubricated because otherwise it's not going to be happy. When you break in these rifles, somebody told me the best way to do it is to pour a quart of 40 weight gear lube in it and just have at it. I don't think you really need to do that, but make sure that all these parts that slide together are actually going to slide. Now you'll be able to see this little bolt will move when you push it into battery. And of course I can't. See, and you'll be able to see the whole the way it moves and rotates. That what holds it together when you fire. Okay. Now you can assemble the upper and lower receiver. The lower receiver again has all the trigger mechanisms in there. Unless you're going to change this to an ambidextrous safety or do some other work with it, you really don't need to mess with that. Just kind of get inside there, clean it up a little bit, make sure all the surfaces that move actually do move. Maybe put a little bit of drop of oil on the trigger mechanism so that it moves like it's supposed to. The pins go together. Slide the bolt carrier group back and forth a couple times. Make sure it's well lubricated. Lock it into the rear position so it stays open. And there you have it. That's how you clean and maintain an AR-15 rifle. I was watching a video the other day class. An ex-Secret Service agent was talking about some of the difficulties our country faced. And he said, to paraphrase, unfortunately, our society is full of wolves. You don't solve that problem by creating more sheep. Don't be a sheep. Learn how to use your firearms. Learn how to defend your family if necessary. Be aware of your surroundings. And don't forget, if you think these videos are helpful and educational, Subscribe to us on YouTube and like us on Facebook.